Hi there, this is Solitary Runner from Solitary Runner Films. Welcome to our random review. Today's review is of Red Angel by Yasuzu Masamura from 1966. Um, this was covered by friend of the channel Roger Kirby a little while ago. And I finally got around to watching it. Um, Masamura has been a wonderful discovery um, of the last six months. Um, Arrow have also released Irizumi, which is fantastic. Um, Giants and Toys, which is absolutely wonderful and still relevant today about corporate shenanigans. Um, Black Test Car. And also Black Report. It's a two film set in this one. And Blind Beast. Which Nazrin Prod did a video on a while ago. I'll leave links to their two videos. Which will be far more entertaining um, than my video. Masamura did make 55 films. Of various variable quality apparently um, from 1957 to 1982 and he made 20 films um, with Ayaka Wakau who is in Red Angel and also um, Irizumi and she is wonderful in both those films um, but obviously he's made 55 films and lots of them are not available. Um, perhaps encouragingly, Fran Simeone, who left Arrow to start Radiance Films, who will start releasing films in January, he's the executive producer on the supplements for Red Angel, so who knows... Hopefully we might get a few more Masamura films from Radiance. Um, but that's all conjecture. It's just a hopeful um, thought. So Red Angel is a war film um, about the Japan-China war in the 30s and 40s and it focuses on a 20 year old nurse from Tokyo played by Wakao who gets initially sent to an outpost in China and then goes to another location and back and forwards um, and ends up on the front line within five minutes of the film um, she is raped by some patients, primarily um, one patient and the kind of head nurse is like, oh this is the third time he's done this to somebody. Um, he is eventually shipped out and she goes on to her next um, post where she meets um, the doctor in charge who is a morphine addict. And the guy who raped her comes in as somebody is wounded, strangely enough. Um, and so he doesn't think she's going to let him die because of him raping her. I mean, what a, what a thought. She begs the doctor to help him out to try and give him a blood transfusion to help save his life. In return for... Not necessarily sexual favours, because because of the morphine, the doctor um, has suffered some damage to his um, ability to have sex. 
but she spends time with him. Um, at night. And this relationship kind of develops as she gets feelings for him. Um, in her mind, she is helping these men out by using her body, even though she also feels responsible for them when they die. So she has this healing view, but she also has this um, I may be killing people. There's another um, patient that comes in who's lost both arms and he asks her to do certain things for him, which again she agrees to in a way of helping him, um, but it ends up perhaps making his mental state worse. And then she goes back to the, you know, so she gets bounced around from a couple of locations, but she ends up back with the, the morphine addicted doctor and they end up on the front lines together. Um, so that's the basic synopsis. But what makes uh, Masamura's film special, apart from the central performance, or pretty much all the performances really, um, Masamura's eye for unusual compositions is quite wonderful. The last shot of the film is absolutely beautiful. Um, but it's also, you know, Masamura doesn't sugarcoat anything um, in all his films. He does have a kind of Kobayashi kind of political view of, you know, this isn't a celebration of the Japanese noble um, war mentality. This is brutality, you know, soldiers rape or try to rape nurses or rape nurses. Um, you know, in the front lines there are comfort women who may have cholera and the soldiers just don't care because they just want to have sex before they die. Um, the looming kind of cloud of death kind of pervades the film. You know, if this was in colour, the title Red Angel would be appropriate. Um, if you're squeamish, Masamura just goes um, full bore, everybody's blood splattered, as in black and white. If it was in colour, he probably wouldn't have got it made. Um, because there's lots and lots of claret flying about. Um, you know, the doctor who just refers to the soldiers as objects and things, they're not humans. The main answer is just let's amputate things. And there's just a wonderful shot of this circular container just with hands and feet that have just been severed and amputated. Um, it's, a, it's a wonderful shot. There's kind of a few scenes of amputations happening um, on the operating table and just limbs being removed. There's a shot just of, you know, endless soldiers on stretchers and somebody picking up a guy's foot and walking away with it and the guy saying, no, bring back my foot. Um, so this isn't MASH, the TV series. Um, this is absolutely brutal. It shows the brutalising nature of war, not just on the soldiers and their mentality of, you know, we're going to die, we might as well just be as brutal and non-human as we can out of this desperation um, but also the brutalising nature of war to the support staff um, to the nurses again who are just viewed as things themselves um, again you can from a modern lens, you can say, 
you know the attitude to women and um, Nishi, who is Wakao's character, her attitude to I'm going to tr- attempt to help these men by giving myself to them. Obviously not the rape at the start of the film, but as far as the relationship with the doctor to try and get the doctor to quit morphine to get him back to life. But then it's like, well, is there a point of getting him back to life if he's just going to die anyway? As the they all potentially are, um, you know, and taking the guy with no arms to hotel and you know pretty much giving herself to him and letting him touch her with his toes because he obviously doesn't have arms or hands. Um, but again, like lots of or the five Masamura films, he's not judging the character's actions and we necessarily shouldn't judge the character's actions um, whether it's the corporate corruption or the lengths a tattoo artist will go to make the the best tattoo um, Masamura doesn't make those judgments. He's literally just saying, there you go, here's some characters, this is what they're doing. Um, Because proper artists don't make judgments. Um, And again, that's why, you know, people like Cronenberg, for example, with Crash, got into so much trouble because he didn't judge these characters, he just shows you the characters and people like to be told in films who's bad and who's good and they like to have things clarified whereas proper artists don't judge what they're showing, the characters they're showing that's up to um, the audience to have a free mind and decide for themselves um, rather than the filmmaker telling you what you should believe or who you should um, like. The film is in that kind of category of horrible, beautiful. Um, again, it's a brutal film, but it has such an eye for interesting compositions. The black and white cinematography is quite wonderful. It's shot at times like a noir um, it's just an absolutely beautiful but horrible um, film which I suppose you could call Blind Beast that as well um, it's a really wonderful addition um, by Aro and there's a new commentary by Japanese cinema scholar David Desser there's a new introduction by Tony Raines which is only 11 and a half minutes, so that's actually quite good for Tony Raines. Obviously, I'm jesting because we all love Tony Raines. Um, and there's a really good um, visual essay by Jonathan Rosenbaum, um, not, angel, not All Angels Have Wings. So Rosenbaum has seen a fair number of Masamura out of the 55. He's seen... Um, at least 40 of them, which, I mean, we'll probably never see um, that many released on Blu-ray. Um, and obviously he says they're a little bit patchy. He does kind of allude to Masamura being perhaps similar to Sam Fuller, which I think is a kind of good and interesting comparison. Obviously he says his later work is a little bit patchy or whatever um, but certainly his 60s films which most of those Arrow releases are um, are really quite wonderful. He does say the film that most people say is Masamura's masterpiece um, isn't actually available with an English um, subtitle so maybe hopefully one day 
I think that's called The Woman Confesses. Um, I might actually get that wrong. But Rosenbaum's essay is quite wonderful as he kind of looks at the commonality through uh, Masamura's best work. Um, and certainly these five, well, six, because one of them's got Black Test Report and... Um, sorry, Black Test Car and Black Report. These are all wonderful films. Um, are any of them masterpieces? You could argue not. But, I mean, Red Angel for me is the closest. Um, it is absolutely wonderful, even though it's horrible. Um, but all of these Masamura films by Arrow are well worth your time and they're all just fantastic um, to various degrees but all well worth um, picking up. So that's Red Angel. Again I'll leave links to Roger Kirby's review of it and Nazrin Prod's review of Blind Beast. They're all of those releases, Giants and Toys is absolutely fantastic as well and still relevant, um, especially in this corporate capitalistic age. But that's Masamura. Hopefully we'll see more of his films get Blu-ray releases. We're looking at you, Radiance. Um, but please let me know if you've seen Red Angel and what you think of it or what your favourite Masamura film is. And hopefully you'll join me again for more random reviews. This is Solitary Ronan. From Solitary Room Films, saying farewell.